Welcome back everyone. Today's video is sponsored once again by our friends over at LateNightPopcorn.com. They rent movies by the week for 99 cents, so that's seven times cheaper than Redbox at least. Um, you never have to wait in line. You can pick from any of the new releases or any of the classics here. Just go into the video and you get to check out the reviews before you even get it. If you haven't signed up yet, go to sign in and register. Register here and fill out the form. If you do sign up for membership, you'll be supporting one of our channel subscribers. Check out their link down in the description. So while most of my videos are about finances and my life, occasionally I like to have something a little off topic here. This one is about DNA results, my mom's DNA results. And it was actually this topic that got this channel started uh, back when I posted a video four years ago about my DNA results and the video took off and it gave me the idea to actually keep posting. So in this video, I'm going to go over my mom's 23andMe results. Now she didn't take the actual 23andMe test, but a couple of weeks ago, 23andMe had a, not exactly a sale, but like a special day where you could take your DNA that you downloaded from Ancestry, if you'd taken that test, and upload it to 23andMe and get their ethnic breakdown and a couple of the tests that they do. Now, I wasn't able to do mine, um, but I did my mom's, and I'm going to show you the results of my mom's, because there's something that I very specifically was looking for, and that was, we've been trying to track down where our African ancestry comes from. It showed up on my DNA test, it showed up on my mom's DNA test, and running it through the system of 23andMe, not only added further proof that it is in fact there, and it's not just statistical noise, uh, but it is actually uh, a little bit more than we thought, um, which I'll talk about here in a second when we flip over to the website. But before we get into this, I do want to tell you guys, when you look down in the comments, to or not in the comments, in the description, to click on the link for lightnightpopcorn.com, there will also be links down there for Ancestry and for 23andMe. For 23andMe, uh, use that link or promo code, I'm not sure which one it is right now, uh, and that will get you a, dis a discount on the test. Same with Ancestry, discount on the test, and you can also get a discount on your Ancestry membership, whether that be the World Connect or whether it be just the US records. Um, so if you are interested in doing the test, make sure you check down um, below for that so you can get it a little bit cheaper. Uh, same with if you're going to become a member of Ancestry. So let's uh, flip over to the website and check out mom's results. So if you've already watched the videos about how my parents are related and my mom's and my Ancestry DNA tests, then you should be caught up on the story. And this is mom's 23andMe results. They're going to look a bit different. And roughly, they're the same. They just divide up the genetic regions a little bit differently. But mom is 99.1% European, which pretty much she thought she was all European, so that matches up. Now, here is where it gets a little more specific about this. Now, before we get into this, I, I just want to uh, preface this with on the other videos where I've talked about tracing down my African DNA, I've got a lot of comments, like a lot, like hundreds of comments about people saying, you're an idiot, everyone is part African. Well, no, you're an idiot because that's not how a DNA test works. Look, you get half your DNA from each parent, a quarter from each grandparent, an eighth so we're at 12.5% at that time from each great-grandparent, 6.25% from each great-great-grandparent, 3% the generation before that, 1% the generation before that. So basically, if it's more than about seven generations back, you're not even related to the people that you're directly descended from. You just don't have any of their DNA because 
it has been filtered out over time. So, okay, yes, all humans thousands of years ago, a hundred thousand years ago or whatever came from Africa, but that's not what this is testing. This is testing what you are made up of, not where the human species evolved. So I just want to get that out of the way uh, before anybody comments about that. Now, if you remember in my DNA results, mine showed Sub-Saharan African and it was less than 1%. And then I had mom tested and her said less than 1%. So we weren't sure how much it was. Was it 0.9% or was it 0 0.001? We didn't know. But with this test, it's more specific. And it does confirm that, in fact, mom does have sub-Saharan African. Um, in fact, West African, which on my ancestry test specifically said Senegal, which is right here. And... Uh, mom has a little bit from uh, this area too, which I had Middle Eastern in my ancestry test. So, I mean, if they are from this part, it could be up there. But this does, in fact, confirm this, and here's why. So, I can actually adjust the settings on this if I remember how to do it. It might be down here. Ah, uh, there it is. Change confidence level. Okay. So let's go over this so I can just show you what I'm talking about. 50%. Uh, this is how it presents the results to you. It's speculative. All right. At that point, mom has 0.9% Sub-Saharan African. So it's almost a percent. So it's closer than we thought. So everything that you see in blue here is European. I'm not sure what's up with that right there. Um, but Everything that you see in red or purple is African. So let's focus just on African. All right, that's this. All right, now let's take it all the way up to 90%, which is conservative. Even at 90%, let's make sure that, no, that's not what I want. 90%. Sub-Saharan African. All right, there we go. Even at 90%, she still has these pieces. I think there was a, a bit chunk of it here that disappears. So she at least, like, for sure has at least 0.4% Sub-Saharan African. Okay, so it's now confirmed, and we have a better idea of uh, how close that ancestor was, how close in time period. And this timeline actually helps with this too. So this is really cool. I didn't actually realize they do this. So keep in mind, this is mom's data. So we just add a generation for it to apply to me. But mom's mostly British and Irish. So you had a parent, grandparent, or great grandparent who is 100% British and Irish. Okay, makes sense. Let's look here. You most likely had a second third or fourth great-grandparent, or fifth, uh, who was 100% West African, likely born between 1740 and 1830. Now, I spoke in my video about how my parents are related about a person who I believe to have been of African descent based on some pictures and some family rumors and also um, just on some things that I was able to find from the record that don't quite makes sense. I think that person must have been passing in Virginia in the mid to late 1800s. And of course, that's not something they're going to leave a record about. It was something they were trying to hide. Now, I'm absolutely fascinated by this. Um, you know, growing up in West Virginia, you're, you're just white. Um, so when you find out, hey, you're actually something else, like you focus in on that and you find, okay, which ancestor was it? And it's just, I don't know, it's really interesting. And I know a lot of people are like, why do you care which relative was African? And I'm like, well, because it's really cool. And I want to know how they passed and, you know, what their story was and were they ever enslaved and, you know, what I just want to know. So there is some African further back. This is in the late 1600s to late 1800s. But this one right here is the one that shows up in me. 
and this is the one that I'm concerned with. Born between 1740 and 1830. Well, the people that I think it was, they were married in 1830. So that puts them right in that time frame. And I um, it, it just narrows it down a little bit. Now, what I couldn't do in this is I couldn't also do mine, which, to be honest, it's more just a curiosity. It's not going to show me much, because whatever African DNA mom has here, I'm just going to have a little bit less than that. The only thing it would possibly t tell me is that if I had D African DNA in places that she doesn't, then that means I also got it from my dad's side. Um, so eventually, I'm next year, if they do this, I'll upload mine, and I'll compare them. Uh, now, I did also get my dad to agree to do the Ancestry DNA test. So whenever he does it, I will make a video showing his results, and I'll also uh, show his results on 23andMe and um, compare those and kind of compare and contrast between mom's and mine and see if we can narrow down that African DNA anymore. But I just thought it was really cool that 23andMe does this. Um, for the, th the free day, they didn't do the health data or anything like that. It was just the ethnic breakdown, which came with the ancestry timeline that was really helpful. And then the chromosome painting actually, I believe, will be very useful. So if we stick it back on 50%, which is where it defaults to, we go back to 0.9 Sub-Saharan African and 0.1% West Asian Northern African. So we can say 1% African at this time for my mom. So... If we assume that my dad has no African ancestry, it's probably about half a percent for me. All right, now, um, what I would like to do is I want to start narrowing down DNA matches that I think, or well, I would know through ancestry, came from this family that I think it came, that, you know, that I think we're passing as white. And I want to see if any, if they have any uh, African DNA, and if they do, if it overlaps with any of the stuff that mom has here, because that is what's going to be, that's what is actually going to prove it came from that line. Now, if it doesn't, it doesn't. And we go back to the drawing board and try to uh, figure it out. But the fact that we've documented that we do in fact have African DNA and we've narrowed down a time frame, I think is just extremely exciting. Just to give you a little more idea of how I think this came about, there is a group of people called the Chestnut Ridge people of Barber County, West Virginia. They're sometimes called as West, West Virginia Guineas or Appalachian Guineas, and they're called a triracial isolate. And they are just beside Philippi, West Virginia. Well, my great-great-great-grandmother, who on the line that I think this was, she was born in 1840 in Philippi. So I think that there is a good chance that they were, in fact, what is called today Chestnut Ridge people. Now, if you don't know what a Chestnut Ridge person is, I will link down in the description if I remember. If not, just Google Chestnut Ridge people. There is a Wikipedia article about it and uh, we'll link you to some further research. Uh, basically, these are people that for the last 200 years have been mixing um, at least black and white, possibly Native American too, uh, and they are right in that community that I know this family was in. And if that is in fact the case, that's pretty fascinating. Uh, and I just wanted to point out as well that with looking into this, um, I don't want anybody to take offense that I'm so fascinated about this aspect. I'm actually very proud of it. Um, it's, it's unusual and it's surprising and that's why I'm so into it. Uh, this obviously at that time in Virginia was something that my ancestors would be trying to hide. Uh, which is why I believe if it is this family, they moved from one side of the state to the other and kind of started over. Um, but even so, I'm very proud of the heritage that I have. So I don't want anybody to think that, you know, I'm looking so into this because I'm ashamed or anything. It's actually quite the opposite. Um, but other than that, that is pretty much it for the update on me looking into my African ancestry. 
if I ever do completely figure out the story, I plan to post a pretty epic video about how I found that out through DNA research and then kind of point out through uh, actual paper research as well, you know, who exactly these people are and put pictures of them up and all that stuff. Uh, so hopefully down the road, once I get my dad test and I run my test through 23andMe, I'll be able to get all of that together and can compare that to some genetic cousins and figure out for sure where it goes. But for now, that is it. Uh, if you guys have had any surprises on your DNA results, regardless of company you did it with, I'd like to know down below if there's anybody like me who is from the U.S., especially the southern U.S., who has African ancestry that they didn't know about, um, I'd love to hear your story. I think when I first published my video back in 2014, uh, when I got my results, I was one of the only people that, or at least the only person that said anything about it in a YouTube video that was finding that out. But I've now found a couple of articles where uh, people are starting to find out, hey, you know, white people aren't all white. And uh, so I just think it's really interesting and try to imagine how the story behind it and, and what happened and how we got that way. Uh, so if any of you have had that experience, please leave it below. Um, I I know some people think race is a tough, touchy subject. I'm sorry if I've offended anyone, but I think this is something that's just, uh, if you get past sort of the touchiness that we have with race and you just look at it from a genealogical perspective, perspective and historical perspective it's it's just really interesting so thank you guys for watching who knows how long it'll be down the road but if i have an update i will make another video um hopefully you guys will check out the links below i we can get you that discounted membership for ancestry or we can get you a discount on either the ancestry dna test or the 23andme test and for my friends out there who are YouTubers as well, go ahead and get that test and uh, make a video and share your results. But until next time, guys, I'm out.